If the leather-bound minute books and records of the University of Virginia archives could talk, they would tell you to pull up a seat, relax a while, because we've got stories to tell you. The early records of the university, housed in the Albert and Shirley Small Special Collections Library, are filled with the routine business of building and managing the institution. Hiring faculty, creating curriculum, and disciplining students are normal fare. But the stories that inspire disciplining students may make you laugh, blush, and even shudder. They, along with letters from townspeople and students themselves, tell incredible tales of the behavior, or should it be said, misbehavior, of the young, white, privileged sons of the upper echelon who made up UVA's student body in the 19th century. It's easy for each generation to think that theirs invented fun, mischief, and generally speaking, bad behavior. But the records reveal something altogether different. Long before Playboy named the University of Virginia the number one party school in the nation for 2012, scoring highest for nightlife and sex. Before the beautifully dressed yet tipsy students staggered their way to and from Foxfield races. Before hordes of young people descended on Madison Bowl for marathon drinking, party, and mudsliding during Easter's. Before Operation Equinox exposed drug trafficking by some UVA fraternities and drew national attention in 1991. And before the 2003 drug bust, Operation Spring Breakdown resulted in the arrest of UVA students and staff alike. Early UVA students, the boys of the 19th century, found themselves getting into some well-documented mischief. From playful annex to deadly deeds, these incidents and events at the University of Virginia shaped student life and the community that surrounded it. Philena Karkin, a school teacher from Massachusetts, came to Charlottesville in 1866 as a representative of the American Freedmen's Aid Commission to teach newly freed slaves. Her memoir, Reminiscences of My Life and Work Among the Freedmen of Charlottesville, Virginia, describes UVA students. Young men from all parts of the South and some parts of the North came here as students. Anyone living near the university would soon become impressed with the idea that it was a pretty wild and reckless crowd. Probably the larger part were orderly and studious, but the disorderly and reckless elements are always more in, in evidence from the very fact of their disorderliness. Woe to the unfortunate individual, be he professor or citizen of the town, who in any way gained the ill will of one of these students. With faces masked and torches made of brooms dipped in tar and lighted, they would march to his house to the music of ten pans and ten horns, and surrounding the building, make night hideous as only yelling demons can. The victim might not always escape with only a cali thump. Injury to a person and property were not uncommon, and murder not unknown. In a letter home around 1895, student William Poindexter describes a streaking incident in the middle of winter. He writes, Yesterday, although the thermometer was about 16 degrees and the wind blowing very hard, one of the fellows here pulled off all of his clothes, everything except his shoes, and ran up the mountain to the reservoir and back again, a distance of about six miles. It was to win a bet of ten dollars, which one of the boys had made him. He didn't seem a bit the worse from it today. It created a good deal of comment in the college. The antics went beyond harmless streaking and give insight into the sexual behavior of these students. In an 1878 letter, Willard Salisbury writes to a friend, There have been about ten or a dozen men shipped out this year for cutting lectures and raising particular hell. Two of them got drunk, went down to a whorehouse, kicked up the mischief, shot a whore, nearly killing her. I've been down to see the ladies five or six times, but don't indulge often, as there are two certain diseases pretty well diffused around here, and if you want to be tolerably certain not to catch the clap or pox, the best way to do is to follow a whore when she gets off the train and take your horizontal refreshments before anyone else from the college gets to her. The town people think the students are a race of heathens, and it's not much to be wondered at. Salisbury later became the U.S. Senator for Delaware. He 
Here he is pictured in a group with then New Jersey Governor Woodrow Wilson. Darker still, murder was not unknown on grounds. Hunter Marshall writes to William C. Carrington in 1840 concerning the infamous fatal shooting of law professor John A. G. Davis by a UVA student. He describes the tragedy as beginning when two disguised students, William Kincaid from South Carolina and Joseph Sims from Georgia, marched onto the lawn, yelling and shooting their pistols. The two were warned by other students that Professor Davis heard the shots, but they dismissed the warning. Sims got into a scuffle with Professor Davis, then ran, turned, and shot him. Davis lingered before dying, and according to Hunter, forgave Sims and hoped he would not be prosecuted. Mrs. Davis sent word she forgave him with from her heart. She miscarried a child which was placed in the arms of his father and buried in the same coffin. Now these stories may seem to have mere shock value, but there's much more to them. These incidents have much to teach today's undergraduates. Students are invariably shocked when faced with archival evidence of a student community far less polite than themselves. These artifacts collapse their assumptions about the past. Like historians, they are challenged to analyze the time, place, and creator of the materials before making their own conclusions. This type of learning is at the heart of what we aim to teach undergraduates who come to special collections for class visits, primary source assignments, and distinguished majors program theses research. It is our goal that students leave with the confidence to fearlessly dig into historical research, even when the subject is seemingly familiar, shocking, or controversial.